Most herbs require some post-harvest processing to preserve their medicinal properties in a stable form. This may include washing and sorting, destoning, cutting, slicing, essential oil distillation or drying. The following guidelines explore some of the key underlying principles of primary processing. Maintaining hygiene and cleanliness is perhaps the most important principle while processing herbs. The processing site should be clean and protected from dust and other potential sources of contamination. The working area should be protected from rain. And if you are working with green leafy plants it should also be protected from direct sunlight. Most herbs will require some primary sorting to remove unwanted parts or any foreign matter that may have been harvested with the herb. Kutki is harvested for its rhizomes, which means that its leaves and green stems must be carefully removed. Brahmi is harvested for its aerial parts, which means that any roots or weeds that may have been accidentally harvested should be removed before being washed. Most herbs, with the exception of certain plant parts such as delicate flowers and seeds, should be washed in clean water to remove mud and other contaminants before being dried. An effective washing method is to use several tubs in a row. The first tub to clean the dirtiest material, the second tub for further washing, and the third tub for rinsing. If you require a more permanent washing structure, you may consider building some purpose-built tanks such as these, which are used for washing the brahmi. Again, the first tank is used to wash mud off the plants. The second tank is used for a final rinse in clean water. Before being placed in a dryer, the water should first be drained off. This can be done by placing the herbs on a dripping rack, as in the example here. Alternatively, the water can be removed using the principles of a centrifuge demonstrated here at a low cost using clean onion sacks. With some investment using a perforated drum, the same principles can be applied very effectively on a larger scale. Having removed excess water, the kutki is laid out on the racks for the water to evaporate in the sun before being put in the dryer. This is also a good opportunity to inspect the herbs and ensure that there is no foreign matter or substandard material. In this way, the material that is placed in the dryer will be of a high quality and only minimal sorting will be required after drying. Here in Uttar Pradesh, a stretcher has been made out of onion sacks to keep the washed mint off the ground. This allows the water to drain and the plants can be inspected before being taken into the dryer. In this case, the length of the stretcher has been measured to fit between the drying racks, again to keep the plants off the ground and to make it easier to lay the plants out on the racks. All these activities should be recorded in a diary with details of the date, a crop number or batch number and the processing that was done. Drying is key in determining the quality of most raw materials used in herbal medicine and is often the stage of production that involves the highest risks. There are many ways of drying herbs, but the main principles are the same whichever method you use. We are all familiar with the principles of drying wet clothes. After wringing out the water, they are hung up and spread out to dry in the sun and the wind. The principles of herb drying are very similar. The herb should be raised off the ground, spread out and exposed to heat and airflow. Green leafy herbs and aromatic plant parts should always be dried in the shade to retain their colour and to prevent evaporation of volatile oils. The most common method used for drying herbs is to lay them out on netting or racks. This can be done at a relatively low cost, as demonstrated with this shade dry in Orissa, designed around the dimensions of a standard mosquito net used to protect the herbs from dust and insects. Another method of drying is to use a solar dryer. The glass panels and black sheets quickly heat the air inside the dryer, 
which is sucked out of one end by an extractor fan, creating a cross flow of hot air and removing moisture that evaporates from the herbs. A simple solar dryer design is demonstrated here for drying kutki roots in Himachal Pradesh. The sun heats the air inside the dryer, causing it to rise and exit out of the top air vent, sucking air in through the lower air vent, creating a cross flow of hot air. On a larger scale, the herbs can be dried on racks in a polytunnel. If this method is used, it is vital that moisture and humidity in the tunnel is kept to a minimum and that a cross flow of hot air is created, either through natural convection currents or by using fans. When herbs are laid out to dry, they should be spread out thinly and evenly to maximize contact with airflow and ensure uniform drying. Each time herbs are laid out in a dryer, a label should be prepared with details of the origin of the plant material and the date that the drying was started, and attached to the dryer alongside the corresponding batch of herbs. In some areas or in certain seasons, if there is high rainfall or high humidity, it may not be possible to dry herbs effectively in a solar dryer in which case a heated dryer may be used, such as this cabinet dryer that is heated by burning biomass. Generally speaking, the best drying results are obtained at a temperature of between 45 to 50 degrees Celsius, or up to a maximum of 60 degrees if there is a high humidity. Aromatic herb species should be dried at a cooler temperature of approximately 30 to 35 degrees. Herbs should only be dried on the ground if there are no alternatives. If this is the case, then they should be dried on a clean tarpaulin and measures taken to minimize contamination or damage from dust, insects, animals, dew or rainfall. Herbs should be left in the dryer until they are dry enough to crumble or snap. Before removing from the racks, the plant should again be inspected and any weeds or other unwanted matter removed. The dried material can then be packed into clean sacks and details of the drying dates updated in the label and farmer's diary. The label should then be attached to the sack so that there is never any doubt about its contents and origin. Once the herbs have been dried and packed, they should be weighed and the quantity recorded in the farmer's diary and on the labels around the sacks. The sacks are now ready to be put in storage or transported to their next destination.